Number nine, the Honourable Leanne Dalzell. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Commerce and asks, what remedies, if any, are available to investors when company directors do not check an investment statement before it is released to the public, despite claims that he or she is involved in managing the investment on a day-to-day basis? The Honourable Simon Mr. Speaker, Mr Speaker, there is no sanction for directors who merely do not check investment statements. However, I'm advised that in general, if an investment statement contains a misstatement, investors are able to bring a claim against directors for compensation for loss they may have suffered under Section 56 of the Securities Act. In order not to be liable, the director would have uh, to rely on narrow defences, such as proving that the investment statement was distributed without his or her knowledge or consent, uh, or alternatively, proving that the director believed on reasonable grounds the statement was true. Sir, even if there has been no loss, the Securities Act provides that the Securities Commission can seek a pecuniary penalty under Section 56 and potentially lay criminal charges against directors under Section 58 in relation to untrue statements. If a director does not check an investment statement and that statement is found to be misleading or contain a misstatement, then the directors could be liable for the misstatement under Section 56 of the Securities Act. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Has the Minister seen the statement on the Dorchester Life website stating that the Hewlett KiwiSaver directors include, and I quote, high-caliber businessmen like Peter Hewlett, Don Brash and John Banks, so your money is being managed day-to-day by a team of highly experienced investment professionals, and if so, isn't he concerned that the public may be misled by such statements? The Honourable Mr. Simon Speaker, Power. I haven't seen the statement the Minister refers to from that source, but I, am aware of the, but I am aware of the more general statement that she refers to. The Member will be aware that the Securities Commission inquiries are continuing into this issue, and on that basis it would be completely inappropriate for me to comment further. The Honourable Mr. Speaker, Mr. Mr. Speaker is, is he aware that Mr Banks and Dr Brash are not merely celebrity directors, but that each is also a part owner of the Hewlett empire, and would he advise Mr Banks in particular to disclose his full interests, given his intention to stand for higher office later this year? The Honourable Mr. Simon Power. Speaker, Mr Speaker, it would be inappropriate for the Minister of Commerce to advise anybody in this situation while the Securities Commission inquiries continue. The Honourable Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, is he concerned about the potential loss of confidence in KiwiSaver as a result of the public statements of two high-profile former National MPs saying they didn't know what was going on, and in John Banks's case, allegations that he is running part of his mayoral campaign out of Hewlett's offices? What? The Honourable Simon uh, Mr Speaker, in respect of the second part of that um, question, I'm unaware of that particular statement. In respect of the first part, uh, the, it would be inappropriate, quite frankly, for anybody in this House, but particularly a Minister of Commerce or, for that matter, a Minister of Finance, to offer a view on the relative merits of any KiwiSaver investment. Question number 10, Joe Goodhue. 